Did you know that the moisture content of honey can affect its preservation? Today we talk about a sweet topic, how to reach the ideal moisture level in honey. Today's presentation is divided into six parts. If you want to go directly to a specific part, you can click on the links provided for this purpose in the description under the video. We obviously start with the video introduction. After we'll see theory on the humidity levels in honey and fermentation. We will talk about the refractometer. Then we'll see a passive method to reduce water content in honey. Then an active method with ventilation. Finally, the video ends with the conclusion. Honey is a complex sweet substance that can be consumed right out of the hive. There is no manipulation or transformation to make it edible. On the other hand, its conservation can be problematic in certain cases. It happens that the honey can ferment. The moisture content of honey will greatly influence the risk of fermentation. In the following table, we can see on the left different percentages moisture content of honey. On the right, the associated fermentation risk. If the water content is under 17.1%, there will be no fermentation regardless of the yeast count. Beyond 18%, we are in a risk area, and above 20%, it's really problematic. So, to the question, what is the ideal honey moisture level for a good conservation without fermentation? There is no single answer that applies for all honeys. But in general, aiming for 17% is in the security zone. It will also be necessary to consider the margin of error of your measuring instrument. On our side, we aim for 17 to 17.2% without going under 16.5 and without going beyond 17.5. A too dry honey will be very thick, it loses its organoleptic qualities, and it will be very difficult to extract. Honey that is too wet will be very liquid and will be at risk of fermentation. Here are some pictures representing the process of fermentation. The supers filled with this honey had been placed in a garage several days during a rainy period. Honey was soaked with water. We can note the gas bubbles. There was also a smell of alcohol that came out from this honey. It must be understood that honey is hygroscopic. It absorbs ambient humidity much like a sponge. So, the ambient humidity will directly influence the honey moisture level. If, as in the previous example, the honey is placed in a very humid environment, it will easily absorb some of this water. In the following table, we put in relation, in the left column, different percentages of the relative humidity of the air from 50 to 80%, with on the right, the water content of honey equilibrated with these values. For example, if the relative humidity of the air is 50%, the water content of the honey present in this place will balance naturally at 15.9%. So, if you want a honey with 17.2 moisture level, you will have to adjust the humidifier accordingly, so under 57.8%. To measure the water content of your honey, you will need a well-calibrated refractometer. To perform a good calibration of your refractometer, please refer to the manufacturer's recommendations. So, here are the four main parts of the refractometer. At the front, we have the prism. This is where honey will be put to measure its water content. Behind, we have a small calibration screw, so to calibrate the device. At the end, we have the focus ring, so we can turn it to focus on the image of the scale. And behind is the high piece. So it's here that we look to take our measure. When looking through the refractometer, before placing honey on the prism, 
we can see an image similar to this one with a scale in percentage, generally from 12 to 27 percent on a honey refractometer. Some refractometers will have two or three scales, the brick scale being quite common. To take a measurement, you have to put a thin layer of honey that will cover all the prism surface. When the honey is spread evenly over the prism, we can take our refractometer, we stand in front of a good light source to make a good reading. If necessary, we can adjust the focus ring. Normally, we should have a figure like this one. The reading will be done at the junction of the blue part and the white part. So here we will have a reading of 17.2%, which will be an excellent value in our case. The passive method of honey dehydration is done without ventilation. And before extraction, it is necessary to install supers in a closed room, where it will be possible to control the temperature and humidity level. Finally, the supers are not placed directly on the ground. To proceed, you are going to need a base to install supers. Of course, you will also need your honey supers. The supers are stacked one over the other by crossing them. A dehumidifier adjusts between 35 and 45 percent, and heating device adjusted between 25 and 30 degrees Celsius. You will also need a thermometer and a hygrometer to measure the ambient temperature and humidity level. And finally, you need your refractometer well calibrated. We first start by adjusting the temperature in the room, so we raise the temperature to at least 25 degrees Celsius. The humidifier must be adjusted under 55%. For honey dehumidification, we adjust it to 40%, and we place an hygrometer, thermometer, to measure the temperature and the humidity level of the ambient air. Then, you have to put the honey supers in the room. They are installed on the base. Here we use two blocks of concrete to allow air to circulate underneath. Super must be crossed over each other, as we can see on the video. Do not forget to take two or three measurements of the moisture content of your honey during process with your refractometer every day at different places in your supers. The total duration of the process is very variable from one installation to another, but it could easily take a week. Once your supers are piled up this way, we can see that the air can circulate passively from below, from the sides, and from the top of the pile. The active method of honey dehydration is done with ventilation before extraction. It is necessary to install supers in a closed room, where it will be possible to control the temperature and humidity. And finally, the supers are not placed directly on the ground. To proceed, you are going to need a base to install supers. Your honey supers will be stacked in a chimney. The humidifier, which will be adjusted between 35 and 45 percent. An heating device adjusted between 25 and 30 degrees Celsius. A thermometer and hygrometer to measure the temperature and the ambient humidity. Your well calibrated refractometer. And a fan. We first start by adjusting the temperature in the room, so we raise the temperature to at least 25 degrees Celsius. The dehumidifier needs to be adjusted down 55%, so we adjust it to 40% in our case. And you need an hygrometer, thermometer to know the temperature and humidity levels. 
Then you have to place honey supers in the room. They are installed on the base. Here it's two blocks from concrete to allow hair to circulate underneath. Supers must be stacked like a chimney. The super on the top will be an empty one, like that, and the fan will be placed in this empty super. The hair will be pushed through the chimney and will leave from the bottom. This is a faster method than the passive method. The process duration is very variable from one installation to another, but it could take two to three days. Do not forget to take three to four measurements of your honey moisture level with your refractometer every day at different places in your super. By having controlled the moisture content of your honey, you can be assured that it will be good for a long time. If you like the video, do not hesitate to click on the like button and share it. Subscribe to our channel for other videos like this. And activate the little bell to receive all notifications and not miss anything. See you soon!